much for all over and never for allowing us to come before you in this prayer today. I would like to thank you for your joy of friendships. I pray that all friendships are joyful. There's nothing sad, depressing going around in their friendships. I pray that everyone's friends, their true friends, never turn on them, that they're not fake. You can have those friends for life if that's how you want. I pray that friendships are healthy. There's no bad things going around, no secrets, no bad secrets, no rumours. I pray that they, they're always healthy. I pray that you will allow us to have um, real friends, be able for us to be real. I pray that you'll give us enough wisdom to choose our friends wisely and that you'll give them wisdom to encourage us to do the right thing and, and not get involved in the wrong thing either. I pray that um, as Jesus had good friends that and he's our best friend, that we all be best friends and be a good friend to others as well. In your holy name I pray, amen. Good is not always easy, and sometimes choosing to do the right thing can be pretty scary. But God wants boys and girls to do what's right. But how can we make sure we do what's right all the time? Well, on today's episode, we'll learn how with God's help, we can be as courageous as lions and we can learn to do the right thing like Miriam. God gives us courage to carry out his plans. Stay tuned. back my friends to Kids Corner. My name is BK and I'm so happy you get to join me again this week on our program. I'll remind you what we do. We'll get to sing some songs together with Slinger the Bear so when that time comes I need you to stand up and sing along and do the actions as well. We'll get to memorize a Bible verse in a very fun and exciting way. We'll get to listen to a super awesome Bible story that I know you will love and enjoy. We'll also get to hear from our friends to know what they've been up to on the spotlight. I have a surprise again for you today. We'll get to do a craft together, so I know you're going to enjoy that. Why am I still talking? Well, let's jump right in. boys and girls, the spotlight is an opportunity for me to show other boys and girls some of the work you've been up to. After each lesson, I create activities for you to do and also you can get to share with me what you were learning from the Kids Corner. Well, today we have an exciting new segment that I know you will enjoy and you can be a part of as well. the first time today friends on the spotlight we are introducing the birthday shout out yay <laughs> you guys like having birthdays oh i love birthdays i love the cakes the presents and everything else but when you are having a birthday you can share your pictures with us so we can give you a kids corner birthday shout out so last week one of our friends midas turned four and he sent me some really awesome pictures and i want you guys to see so let's say happy birthday midas 
Happy birthday, Midas. May God continue to bless you and may you grow to be more like Jesus. A few weeks ago, on our very first episode on Kids Corner, we had a lesson about how we could be little helpers like Jesus. Now, Enoch has been very helpful around the house and his mommy sent me this picture with him helping around the house. Enoch, well done. Your mom and dad are very proud and I know that Jesus is very happy to see you helping around the house. Boys and girls, have you been helpful around the house? I really hope you have been. If you have been, remember that Jesus is so glad and so happy. Well, boys and girls, that's it for the spotlight this week. If you want to be on the spotlight next time, make sure that you do the activities or if you're learning the songs or doing the memory verses or if you have a birthday coming up or you've had a birthday gone, send me some pictures. Get in touch with me on bkkidscorner at gmail.com. I can't wait to see your work. I can't wait to see your spotlight and I cannot wait to share with our friends next time. Friends, can you think of some of the biggest animals that God created? Shout out your answers and I'll see if I can hear them. Are you ready? Give me a thumbs up when you're ready to shout. Okay, let's go. <gasps> Did somebody say an elephant? Yes! Elephants are big, massive animals. What else? Shout out your answer. <gasps> Did somebody say a hippo? Yes, definitely. Hippos are massive. They are huge, big animals. What else? Did somebody say a giraffe with a long neck? Definitely giraffes are quite massive and very, very tall animals. Now friends, let me ask you, what animals do you think are the most courageous or bold animals that God created? Once again, shout out your answer and I'll see if I can hear. <gasps> Did somebody say a monkey? <laughs> That's a good guess. What else? What animals do you think are bold and brave in the jungle? <gasps> Did somebody say a gorilla? Yeah! Definitely, I think gorillas are quite huge and they are quite bold. What else? <gasps> Did somebody say a bear? Yes, bears can be quite huge and brave. They have to fight. They're quite scary animals, aren't they? Cute as teddy bears, but quite huge and scary. What other animal do you think is quite bold? Did somebody say a pig? The one that says oink oink? <laughs> I don't think so. Wait, that was a good guess. What else? <gasps> Did somebody say a tiger? I think definitely tigers are quite strong and brave. Okay, pick one last one. <gasps> a lion! Yes, yeah, somebody guessed a lion. That's right, I had a lion as well. Lions are quite bold and courageous. Well done for guessing boys and girls. Those are some really awesome guesses and I know that even though I didn't hear some of your guesses as well, I know that some of those animals are pretty brave and bold. People can also be courageous and bold like animals. In the Bible, in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1, the Bible says, good people are as bold as lions. Isn't that awesome? So we can also learn to be as bold and as courageous as lions. Can we roar like lions? Let me hear you roar. <laughs> do that again, let's do it again. Roar like a lion, as loud as you can. <laughs> well, today, boys and girls, we're gonna learn about having the courage to do the right thing. We spoke about having the courage to face the things we're afraid of, but we also need courage to do the right thing. Doing the right thing is not always easy, but God can help us to carry out his plans. Now I'm gonna give you some situations and some scenarios, right? In these scenarios, let me know which one you think is the hard thing to do and which one is the easy and naughty thing to do. For the hard thing to do, we're going to roar like a lion. Let's roar like a lion. And for the easy thing to do, the naughty thing to do sometimes, we're going to oink like a pig. So I want you to decide whether you'll be the courageous lion that roars when you do the right thing, or you can be the pig that oinks, oinks, oinks when you choose to do the easy thing. Are you ready? Okay, here's the first situation. 
let's say you're playing ball inside the house after mom has told you not to play ball in the house. You then break the glass on one of mom's favorite picture frames. What will you do in that situation? A, you could hide the glass and hope that nobody ever finds out. Or B, you can tell mommy the truth, even though you might get in trouble, and you can promise not to play ball inside the house again. Now friends, which of those options is an oink easy not to think to do, or which one is the rah, hard thing to do, but the best thing to do? A or B? Oink for A? <laughs> Definitely A is an oink. Why is it easy to do the wrong thing in that situation? Because you might be afraid to get in trouble. But doing the right thing is usually hard. Telling the truth will be hard because you might get in trouble. But that's what courage means. Do the right thing, even though you might get in trouble for it, but it's the right thing to do. And you need courage to be able to do that. So we can tell the truth and rawr, like lions. Well done. Let's do another one. Okay, friends, here's a second scenario. One of the children in your class is being bullied and has been called names and he also smells pretty bad. Some of the children don't want to play with him because they think he's pretty weird and creepy. Now, what would you do? Which one is the oink thing to do? And which one is the rah thing to do? A, you could stand up to the bullies and you can make friends with this classmate and not be afraid to be laughed at. B, you could laugh along with the other children and just stand by and not do anything. That way you won't lose your friends. Now, which one between A and B is the oink easy thing to do? And which one is the raw difficult thing to do, but the right thing to do? That's right. A is the raw thing to do. In that situation, you can show courage by making friends with that classmate so even though he's being bullied and other children single him out you can show how you can be a friend to that person that's doing the right thing even if it might mean you might lose your friends or they might actually say you stink too it doesn't matter it's the right thing to do so you can show the courage of a lion by doing that doing what everybody else does is the oink thing to do it's very easy to do but it's very very oinky <laughs> so would you rather rah, or would you rather oink 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 I know I want to be like a lion as well okay well done let's do one last one your parents cannot afford to buy you a new toy or a new phone or a tablet or iPad or it could be new shoes or some clothes that you really really want because all your friends have this and your cousins have this as well and you feel like you're missing out but your parents cannot afford to buy you that thing at that moment. What would you do in that situation? A. You could throw a tantrum and say it's not fair. I hate you mommy and dad. It's not fair. And you could sulk and refuse to talk to them. Or B. Even though you're disappointed you can say, I understand, and you can still get to play with your old toys or wear your old clothes and show gratitude for what you have and wait patiently so that maybe one day your parents will be able to afford to buy you that thing. Now, which one of these is an oink thing to do? And which one of these is a raw thing to do? A or B? Which one is oink? A, throwing a tantrum is very, very oinky. That's true. But why is it easy to throw a tantrum? Because some boys and girls believe that if they do that, they'll get whatever they want. It's not always the right thing to do. But sometimes being patient or showing understanding, even when we want things our way, that's showing the courage of a lion. You see, friends, 
doing right is not always easy. That's why we need God to help us as boys and girls to have the courage to do what is right. Well done for participating. That was really good. Maybe you can think of some situations that have happened in your life at home and you can discuss with your parents right now about how you can show courage and do the right thing in some of those really difficult scenarios. Now stand on one foot. Good. Stretch out your arms, lean forward, hold that position, and we're gonna count down from 10. Ready? Let's go. 10, nine, eight, oh, seven, six, five, I'm struggling, four, three, oh, two, you keep going, one, and zero. Well done. Okay. I couldn't keep up. I, I, I lost my balance. Maybe some of you still held your position. Well done for that. But friends, what would it be like if I had asked you to stay in that position forever and ever and ever and ever? That would be impossible or we would get really, really tired, right? I know something that stands for ever and ever and ever and ever. And we're gonna learn about that today. And that will be on our memory verse today. So make sure you grab your Bible right now and we will read our memory verse. Our Bible verse today says, in Psalms chapter 33, verse 11. Say it with me. Psalms 33, verse 11. The plans of the Lord stand firm forever. Let's say it together. Psalms 33 verse 11. The plans of the Lord stand firm forever and ever and ever. Well done. Let's do that again. Psalms chapter 33 verse 11. The plans of the Lord stand firm forever and ever. Well done. The Bible tells us that God makes plans that stand firm forever. That means God has plans that boys and girls like you and me have to carry out for him, but he also will give us the courage to carry out what those plans are. And sometimes it could be scary to do. Sometimes it would be difficult to do. Sometimes it might mean you might be different among other boys and girls, but God will give you the courage to carry out his plans. Today, we're gonna to learn about a story in the Bible about a little girl, I promised you a story about a little girl this week, who was able to have the courage to carry out God's plans. And we'll also talk about what are some of the plans that God has for boys and girls like you and me today? Are you ready for the story? So tell me a story. <laughs> tell me a story. Great, okay, here we go. A new Pharaoh ruled over Egypt where the Israelites were living. When he saw how many Israelites they were, he became afraid of their power. He warned his people that if war came, the Israelites might side with their enemies and then leave the country. So the Egyptians forced the Israelites to become their slaves. Tough slave masters made them build their cities and they treated them very unfairly. But despite their poor treatment, the Israelites grew stronger and more numerous. So the Egyptians brutally forced them to work even harder. Now the midwives who helped women deliver babies 
were summoned by Pharaoh and he ordered them that if a Hebrew woman gave birth to a baby boy, they must kill it. How horrible is that? And only if the baby was a girl, they could let the baby leave. But the midwives obeyed God rather than Pharaoh and they let the baby boys live too. Now Pharaoh summoned the midwives to ask why the baby boys were not killed. And the excuse they gave was that the Hebrew women were giving birth to baby boys before they had time to get to them. So Pharaoh gave orders to his people that every baby boy be killed. What a horrible thing to do. Now there was a Hebrew man and his wife from the tribe of Levi. We had just had a baby boy. They hid him away from the Egyptians for three months. But the baby grew older and it became harder to keep him hidden. So his mother came up with an idea to keep her baby out of sight. She got a basket, she covered it with leaves, she covered it with tar and pitch to make it waterproof. She put the baby in the basket and carried down the basket to the river Nile. Now her young daughter Miriam helped her. Miriam held the basket in the tall bulrushes with her mother by the side of the river. And Miriam was to keep watch over the baby from a distance. Unexpectedly, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bath. She spotted the basket and sent one of her attendants to fetch it. She said, get me that basket. What's in that basket? Now when she opened the basket, she saw the baby was crying. The baby was crying and she felt sorry for him. And she said, this must be one of the Hebrew babies. Now Miriam, who had been watching, she came up running to the princess and she said, excuse me miss, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to help look after the baby for you? The princess said, yes, yes, do that. Go find somebody to help look after the baby. Miriam ran, she ran, she ran as fast as she could to get her mother. And the princess said, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the mother looked after her own baby until he was old enough to be taken to the princess where he was brought up as her son. The princess named him Moses which is an Egyptian word that means drawn out because she said she drew him out of the water. Now the boy, the baby Moses, had a special mission later on as an adult that God had for him. He helped to deliver the Egyptians from being slaves in Egypt. We'll learn about that one day. But that may not have happened if Miriam had not shown tremendous courage. Now you see friends, just as God gave Miriam the courage to carry out his plans, he can give you the courage to carry out his plans as well. God always has special missions for boys and girls today and you as well, especially you. Yes, but we have to be able to learn what some of those plans are. Most of God's plans are in the Bible and we can learn about God's plans for boys and girls today from the Bible. So we need to be able to read our Bible so we can learn those plans and God can help us to show courage as we do them. Some of the plans that God has for boys and girls today, some of them have covered them on our previous episodes on the Kids Corner. Some of God's plans and some of his special missions for boys and girls are he wants boys and girls to be obedient to their parents and their teachers as well. That's part of God's plan and he can give you the courage to do that. Some of God's plans, he wants boys and girls to be friends with some of those children who don't have many friends or people think they are weird or even the mean ones. God says, go and make friends with them, be kind to them. That is one of God's plans. Some of God's plans, he wants you to put a smile on somebody's face who might be sad or upset. That's part of God's plan for boys and girls. Some of the plans for boys and girls, he just wants you to be nice to a little brother or sister or your cousin or anybody at home. Don't be mean, but play with them. You share your toys. That is part of God's plan and he can give you the 
courage, the courage of a lion to carry out those plans. And when you're older, you may be asked to do some really big things for God, but you get to do big things for God when you learn to show the courage to carry out his plans while you are still a little boy and while you're still a little girl. Isn't that great? Oh, I'd love to know what your special specific mission is. Well, friends, even though sometimes we might be afraid to do the right thing, and we can, we can ask Jesus in prayer to help us to have the courage to do what he wants us to do. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for today's lesson. Please help us to be courageous so we can do the right thing. Help us to have the boldness of a lion and to remember to work with you so you can carry out your plans for us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, boys and girls, to help us remember the lesson, I thought we'll do a craft and I'd like us to make medals of courage. So whenever you do something courageous, when God helps you to carry out his plans, I'd like you to wear your medal with pride. It can also help you to remember to always choose to do the right thing. All right, friends, the first thing that I'm going to do is to trace on my piece of paper the shape of my medal. So whatever you're gonna use, do the same. Trace it around with your pencil and I'm going to do that on my colored paper which is gold because my middle is going to be gold trace it around as well after this I'm going to cut my shape cut the circle remember if you're not allowed to use the scissors just ask your parents to help you with this process okay boys and girls so now I have two sides cut I have the hard paper and I have my the front of my middle as well. So I'm gonna stick those two together, the hard part and the front of my middle. Then at the back of my middle, I'm going to write that God helps me to be courageous to carry out his plans. Okay, friends, so I got to write on mine that God helps me to be courageous to do the right thing. You can write whatever you want, God makes me brave, it's your middle, but just write something that will help you to remember to be courageous all the time, right? Now I'm gonna punch a hole in my middle so I can hang it around my neck. I like my middle. I think you guys can do a much prettier one than mine, right? Okay, so, ready? Punch a hole, make sure I can do it on the letters. There we go. And finally, the last step is to attach the string. I'm gonna tie it, and then I'll be able to wear it. Well, friends, this is the final product of my Medal of Courage. Make yours, make yours more cool than mine, you know, and I would love to see your medal. So please, when you make your medal, send me a picture. I would really love to see it. And if you like, I can show it to other boys and girls next time we are together again. I really hope you enjoyed the program today. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Remember that God gives us the courage to do what he wants us to do. And until next time, my friends, take care. Bye.